Well, uh, James Rivington was a loyalist printer in New York, and uh, stories broke about him as a spy for Washington pretty much as soon as the war was over. Uh, one of the reasons that happened was when New York was uh, taken over by the Americans at the end of the war, everybody assumed Rivington would be arrested and thrown in jail, and that did not happen. In fact, there were soldiers who went and basically protected him. And so there were a lot of comments in the newspapers about what's going on, why is this guy being protected like this? And so there were people who said, hmm, must be because he's worked for us. Uh, and those stories continued. Now, the first formal comments actually came in 1860 when uh, uh, George Washington Parker Custis's memoirs were published and he was uh, grandson of Martha Washington. And uh, he commented that Rivington had been a spy for George Washington. But historians for years said, no, no, it didn't happen. Uh, it really doesn't become fairly accepted until uh, 1959 when there's an article published that talks about some documents that had just been found at that point, particularly some uh, letters by Alan Tremaine, who was a uh, very well-known informant for Washington. And he said that Rivington was a source of information that he used. The piece he was talking about, he said that he got the uh, signal uh, guidelines for the British fleet from Rivington, and he was able to pass that on to uh, de Grasse, and he used it at Yorktown, and that's helped him win the battle, the sea battle before the land battle at Yorktown. And so it's really been only recently, relatively recently, that we have felt like there's enough evidence to say, yeah, Rivington really was a spy for Washington, at least late in the war.